you today. I have had to be taking testosterone for about five years now, since I was 38. And I couldn't afford the Angel Joe. It's very expensive. At the time when I first uh, started taking it, it was going to cost me like 250 bucks a month. So decided that it was best to just go ahead and take the injections. Now you guys out there that take those injections, you understand that's a one inch needle. And it's hard to bring yourself to stick it into yourself. Now some of you guys out there, you're really great at it. You could probably job a nail down your neck, down in your leg if you needed to. I'm not one of you guys, okay? So I was stuck. I either go to the doctor on a real regular basis every two weeks and have him stick me or if there was somebody in my family that could either learn it or do it, have them give me the injections. Well, my sister's an Aryan. She done it for me. She's been doing it for me for years. Problem is, is our schedules would not always match up where I could get it right on time. And if you don't keep it on time, it really screws with your hormones. So I started looking around for auto injectors. They make them for diabetic syringes and you know, those people really need them sometimes because they're not any better than me and even though that's a little bitty needle compared to what I have to stick in me. There wasn't any commercial ones for the size of syringe we've got. I could purchase an auto injector pre-fill. Pre-fills were expensive and as well been spending the money on Androgel. But I got to thinking, what I I deal with all kinds of stuff that's about that size and pipe and tubes and stuff. I'm an automotive technician, but I've done some of my own plumbing and carpentry. Well, I got to thinking, you know, PVC pipe is relatively inexpensive. And I'm pretty sure I remember seeing something small like that. Um, I was thinking 3H PVC, 3HC PVC, something like that half inch CPVC. Well, it turns out what was available local that's working just fine for me is half inch CPVC. I made a little setup. It's an auto injector. Okay? This thing right here, it's a homemade auto injector. Use one of these little approximately one inch diameter um, ponios that look like they're made out of a small bungee cord and uh, drop my Syringe down, release the trigger to get it down, loop this around, and look at me dropping things. Now you see me out of frame. Get this thing where that's like this, then you can draw this back till the needles dip in there. I drilled the hole in there large enough to where you could get the protector off after you put it in the syringe, that way you don't ding the needle. You don't want a sharp needle going into you. Tried this for the first time, I did not feel the needle go in. In fact, when I was playing around with it, I had left the protector on, and it shot the protector off the needle. And it works very well. Now, I'm going to show you the components that I made it out of. First off, half inch CPVC. Second, a PVC pot cap that I drilled a 3 8 hole in. Now, I got to thinking later a half inch hole would be great. Okay, a modified clothes hanger. Now you can see the modifications here. Cut off one side extremely short, cut the top end, the business end, off almost to the point where the little arches in here are gone. Cut the handle off at the top groove on the trigger side and cut the other one just short of the spring back here. That way it can set on the top of the cap after it was on there. Drilled a 3 16 hole here for the trigger piece here to go into. Now that is made out of a piece of hanger that was bent in such a way to where it would allow you, I don't know how close I can get or if you can see this very well, but it sticks through about halfway. That allows it to bind against the side of the uh, um, syringe when it's in there. Now, I didn't bother buffing or, or uh, grinding this off in any way, so it kind of scratches my syringes. You can buff it off, because all it's doing is binding the side. 
You don't want to draw it back to where it actually gets under anything. You just want to draw it up back enough. That thing will snap down fast. Now the tools I use now, I know this is a traditional for PVC pipe. It's a tubing cutter to use with copper pipe or some metal tubing. But it cuts PVC pretty well too if you're careful. You don't want to do it too tight because it will start to try to flatten and squeeze. And that flatten and squeeze tends to lend a torque that will thread the pipe instead of cut it. Um, otherwise, if you've got a PVC cutter around, a PVC pipe cutter around, you can use that. Um, to get my measurements off here, I took advantage of this. I used super glue to put this all together now, and I Loctite super glue. The particular is the Ultra Drill Control. Um, put the cap on, and then took a quick measurement. I wanted to make sure that the barrel, complete barrel of the needle, which the barrel is the metallic part that's exposed. So that's got to be all the way in you. So you wanted to make sure when you cut your end off that that would be exposed out the end of your pipe cap, which I just laid it up here, done it the easy way, got it matched up, and marked my tube, cut it off with this on. Now, I didn't glue the cap on. You can glue the cap on. You can glue it on first. Make it a lot easier when you're drilling the cap because you'll have a little more to hold on to. If you need to, you can drop a rag in a vise if you got it. Put it in there. <coughs> run down the center of the tube to bore this out. That way it kind of stays centered. Um, and like I said, a half inch drill bit there <coughs> for your trigger hold to go through. It needs to be 3 16 Now you can see how I took the hanger and I super glued it to the back side all the way down the length right here. That was to make sure that when I'm pulling on this, if for any reason it caught or torqued, I had my thumb on it, it wasn't going to break the wood out or anything like that and you lose it. Super glued this to here. This uh, Ultra Gel Super Glue that Loctite makes is excellent. Now, one really important factor. See this big gaping hole right there? Now, I use my bench grinder to do that. Don't have to do it that way, but you do need that. You need enough exposed so that you can see up to about your half mil to one mil area of this where the medicine is in the syringe. And that's for aspiration. Now, aspiration is a fancy term that they use in the medical field for basically you draw back on the needle uh, on the plunger after you've inserted the needle in yourself to make sure you didn't hit an artery or a vein or anything that's going to allow blood up into the syringe. Because if it's allowing blood into the syringe, it's allowed, going to allow the medicine into your veins. Now, I know from experience what it's like to get a little bit of the medication directly in your bloodstream. Although you have testosterone running through your bloodstream all the time, that oil that it's in, you don't. And if you're like me, it's going to give you a min at least a very minimal amount of an anaphylactic reaction. Basically, you're going to start feeling like you can't breathe. I started coughing, felt like I had gotten something hung in my throat. I hadn't had, drank anything, hadn't swallowed any saliva, got it down the wrong way. My throat was pretty dry, actually. I was, and it, but I wasn't feeling that way before the injection started. And my sister had uh, managed to penetrate a small vein in the very tip of mouth that was right there on the tip of the needle and managed to get into my bloodstream. She realized that was she aspirated. So she didn't inject a bunch of it in my bloodstream. She pulled back just enough, get out of the blood vessel, and gave me the injection. Um, much more and I'd have had to take something, some Benadryl or something to deal with the anaphylactic reaction. Um, so that's real important, have that view window. Um, you really, really want to use the bungee cord style of these because it's going to last longer and it's also a lot cheaper than going out there and trying to figure out how to make your own thing. Now if you put this together like I was doing, you'll notice when I put that on there, I caught that bungee cord, that little ponyo, right on the sawed off portion of 
my trigger, which was a clothespin. And I had this inserted in here in such a way to where I could catch one of those side delts like that. That'll allow you to get it full pull down on there without losing grip and the thing popping off of the syringe instead of pulling the syringe down into you. Okay? Now, I can't stress enough about aspiration. You want to make sure. When you draw it back, if you see anything that looks like a little red or brown curling up in that medication, you hit a blood vessel, you either need to draw it back out, reset and start over, or you, if it doesn't look like you got a whole lot, you might pull the needle up just a little bit and see. Aspirate again, see if you draw any more blood. Otherwise, you got to choose another injection site. Now, the injection sites that you can get away with, right across the top of your leg, if you lay your palm sideways across your knee, from your thumb, up, and if you place your hand across your leg right at your below your growing, in between there, it's about an eight inch stretch along your leg, right on the top that you can give yourself injections, and to like about a 45 degree on each side. No further around the leg or anything. If you've got questions, it will always be great. Talk to your doctor. Get him to give you instructions on injections if you don't have any good medical individuals in your family that can do it. You do want to do this right, you don't want to screw it. But for those of you that are taking a mill or less in a, each injection, you've also got this injection site, the shoulder muscles. Now, to do it for you, you always need the muscle relaxed so that you don't have um, any more strain. It makes it harder to get the muscle through. So that you can see well, prop your arm up on something like this to give this out. And then with it propped, the muscle will relax. You can give the injection. You can see what you need to see. Also, in the proper spots on your hip, they can teach you that. Now, not everybody's flexible enough to see around there to do a proper aspiration. But if you are, you want as many injection sites that you can work with so you don't get oversaturated in those areas and have too many penetrations. I'm not very flexible, can't do it here, and i got to take so much I can't take it up here, so I'm kind of stuck with my legs. Um, there are enough. I can do six injections in each leg alternating back and forth, so I ought to be able to keep from oversaturating the muscles and over-sticking them um, because it will give large amounts of time since I take a mil and a half every two weeks. You want um, as many injection sites though that you can get, and most people I do know take mil or less every two weeks, you can pop yourself in the arms. You can pop yourself in the legs, and if you're flexible enough to get around where you can see to aspirate in your hips, do your hips. Make sure you know proper spots that you can get away with on your hips, because I personally don't really remember, I'm not going to be doing that. I know up here, and I know down here. But make sure you learn. Seek proper advice. Make sure you do it right. And make sure you realize this thing will work, but if you screw up with it, you can hurt yourself. So be careful. And thank you. Thank you.